stories that I have that I ever composed myself. And the only one that I can remember clearly, and I don't even think you may have ever heard this one. Wow. Um, it's the story of a lady named Aurelia. And it is set in the times of ancient Rome. Uh, Aurelia was brought to Rome as a slave when she was a young girl. And was sold into the house of a senator named Caius Optimus. And Caius took a liking to her partially because she seemed to be a clever young girl. Her exact background, where she came from, was unknown. Presumably one of the northern provinces because, among other things, she had golden hair and lavender eyes. And so her true name was lost in time. The senator called her Aurelia, or, which meant she of the golden hair included her into his household and he was unusual at the time that he treated his slaves fairly well and in fact believed in having them somewhat educated so they could be helpful around the house. Now the senator had two sons, Gaius and Lucanus. Gaius was the eldest and he had a very martial nature he was always quarrelsome. Eventually, his father got him an appointment to the Praetorian Guard where he could use his natural bullying talents to good effect. <laughs> Lucanus, on the other hand, was quieter, more studious, studied the, the, the ancient text in Greek and many of the writings, and had plans to become an architect to design roads and buildings and temples and such like. And as time went on, Lucanus and Aurelius became rather fond of one another. Of course, a marriage between the son of a senator and a mere slave was something unthinkable. But the senator was not blind to this. And after doing a certain amount of research, he turned up documentation showing that Aurelia was in fact descendant from a royal line. And as soon as the ink was dry on these documents, <laughs> there was a plan for them to be wedded. Unfortunately, before this could happen, the senator was in the midst of a grand oration and argument on the floor of the Senate when he had a sudden attack of health and collapsed there and died. This was a great sadness to the family. And no one knew exactly what to do next until Gaius came home a little bit drunk and declared now that as the eldest son of the family, the house was his, the position was his, and all property therein, including the slaves, belonged to him exclusively. And thus it was he was going to take Aurelia for himself. Now Aurelia wanted none of this and the two of them quarreled somewhat. And as the quarrel got, as the quarrel got more and more heated, eventually Gaius, with his heated temper, completely lost control, drew out his gladius sword, and slashed Aurelia with it. At this point, the rest of the servants rushed forward and essentially held him down until he passed out from drink. And they then rushed Aurelia off to some of the, uh, I guess you would call them, the, the pagan herbalists and healers of the time to see if anything could be done. It was determined that her wounds were almost certainly mortal, but there was something they could do. 
And so they gave her a most unusual treatment. And now, yeah. a few days passed, and when finally she awoke, it was in a darkened room. And her friends, the healers, were gathered about her. And they explained to her that they had performed a very ancient procedure to restore her life. And that she could proceed now, but there was two conditions. One was she could never go out into the light of the sun. And the other was to preserve her life. She must now feed upon the blood of the living. Now, somewhat taken aback by this, Aurelia was, well, horrified at the thought and rushed out of the, the, the catacombs to wander through the streets and perhaps by unconscious intent, perhaps by chance, she came close to her her old mansion, her old estate, and there within was Gaius, who of course was drunk again, and engaging upon one of his favorite hobbies, which was abusing his brother and beating his servants. And Aurelia, without thinking, took offense at this, immediately entered the hall and called out in a loud voice, Stop what you are doing at once. It is inappropriate. And Gaius now turned towards her and said, You wench who refused me. I failed to put you down the first time. I will not this time. And again he drew his sword and again he rushed upon her. And when he swung the, bail, the blade, without thinking, she reached up, caught it in her hand, and snapped it cleanly off. With her other hand, she took him by the throat, pushed him up against the wall. And there he, he, he stood pinned, looking down into her glowing eyes. It was the last thing he ever saw. When the officials came the next day to investigate this, they uh, They were told the story by the servants that obviously he had gotten drunk, fallen down, and done himself grievous injury and expired during the night. And if anyone ever noticed his unusual paleness and the markings on his neck, no mention was made of it, he was taken out and given a funeral and the body burned. And now Lucanus, became curious, what, what happened to, to Aurelia? Well, at first they did not want to tell him, but at last they broke the news. And their first meeting must have been rather peculiar, but nevertheless, being still fond of each other, their relationship continued. Of course, they could not be married, but frequently she would come to see him, always after sundown, and always be gone by sunrise. Lucanus did complete his studies and became a uh, great architect, a builder of roads and buildings and temples and, and aqueducts. And in the time that he was gone, which sometimes are many days at a time, Aurelia took to wandering wandering through the streets of Rome. And it became fairly well known that if you were up to no good, if you attended to assault people or rob them in the night, you just may run across this slender woman with golden hair and lavender eyes, and it will be the last thing you ever see. And if you were dealing in slaves at that time, you would probably never be seen again, and your slaves would somehow 
vanish into the catacombs. Well, as time went on, Lucanus grew older. But apparently, really it did not. They accepted this, but as the years passed, inevitably it happened that Lucanus died of old age and was given a proper Roman funeral and interred in the crypt at the edge of Rome. And it is said that as the sun set that day, there was one lone figure standing by the site of the grave. And she stood there for the entire night. And when morning came, she quietly sat down facing the sunrise. And shortly thereafter, the servants went back to the grave and they gathered up the robe with the bleached bones inside and buried them at his side. And that was Aurelia. Nice, thank you.